This protest has now evacuated the United States Senate. These pictures, no doubt, being seen in the White House and around the world of our capital under siege. What American Radical does is it's really like a very rare, intimate look inside the mind of one capital rioter. That's Roseanne Boyland, who died there that day. Hi there, everyone. My name is Ayman Mohideen. I am an anchor on MSNBC and host of the MSNBC original podcast, American Radical. Today, we are going behind the story for NBCU Academy to talk about the making of American Radical. And I'm joined now by Preeti Varathan, the producer extraordinaire who worked on this podcast uh, series with me. We're going to try to shed some light on it for you in terms of how we made it, how we worked on it, how we gathered the news and ultimately put together the story. So thank you so much for joining us and welcome Preeti. Preeti, it's great to have you with us. So I, I know a lot of people are have been fascinated by American Radical and the reception it has had has been overwhelming. I think a lot of people have reached out to both of us uh, to tell us about similar stories they've had in their own family. But let's start broadly speaking here with how did you find reporting on this story? What stood out to you the most about it? And and just shed a little bit light on how all of this uh, came together from a production standpoint. Yeah, I mean, I'm so happy to be here. And, you know, at its heart, American Radical I see it as sort of a postmortem, an autopsy on what happened on January 6th from the perspective of one person who was there. Roseanne Boyland hated politics. She was shy and rarely left her home in Georgia. She didn't even like going to Walmart or the grocery store. But Roseanne had been changing. It was just kind of stuff she started posting on Instagram. It would be like 10 times a day. It was like an obsession. Then she went to Washington on January 6th. And we fight. We fight like hell. She never made it back. I think from, you know, a reporting and production standpoint, what was so interesting about this story was the kind of access we got to Roseanne's family. You know, we spent a lot of time talking to Lana and Justin and Roseanne's parents and really building these incredibly sort of deep and intimate relationships with Roseanne's family so that we could get a full 360 picture of who she was and also so that we could get access to, uh, you know, a lot of the kind of artifacts she left behind in her life. And so the text messages, the diary entries, the screenshots, the social media posts, like when you die, you still leave a lot behind. And I think a huge part of building American Radical was just trying to reconstruct the last six months of her life. And a big part of that was your personal connection to to Roseanne, to this town. I got a message from a Facebook friend of mine, Justin Cave, who happened to be Roseanne's brother-in-law. He identified one of those that died on the Capitol as being his sister-in-law and then ultimately said to me, uh, would you like to hear her story? Because the family believed that she had been radicalized within the span of six months. So that was the personal connection for me. The reason that I, I reached out to you is because I know you. Like out of all the other press that reached out to us, I, I didn't. I didn't play soccer with them as a, as a kid like I did with you. And um, so for me, that yeah. was comforting. And I think you know, to your point, Preeti, it was something that gave us access to the family. There was that initial trust. Um, and obviously you got to Georgia and you had to build your own relationships with the family. How do you start to gather those pieces of information to build that narrative uh, and build that trust with the family? Yeah. I mean, I think like building any relationship in your life, it's a sort of long and complicated process that requires a lot of daily dedication, right? That's one of the best things I think about being able to work on long long form reporting, being able to work on an audio series, being able to work on this sort of long form feature narrative journalism is that I got many months to build a relationship with Roseanne's family. And to me, the big thing was just repetition, repetition, repetition. You know, you don't get good tape from one interview. 
you don't get good tape from one phone call. It was about, you know, I was talking to Roseanne's sister, Lana Cave, probably once every week. I had multiple phone calls with your friend, Justin Cave, Roseanne's brother-in-law, right? And then as I built their trust, I said, hey, would you be able to connect me with some of Roseanne's friends? And just sort of like it mushroomed like a network, right? It's like suddenly that I'm talking to friends and, you know, that personal recommendation comes where they're like, hey, this girl isn't going to, you know, ask you a bunch of really scary questions. One of the things that we both, uh, and I always joked around with uh, Preeti about, because she'd always say to me, like, we need to do this again. I'm like, do we need to speak to that person? Do we really need to do this again? And she'd always say, yes, we definitely need to do it again. We need to speak to this person. I always tell people like, with audio, if you want a good interview, you really should at least set up 30 minutes with a person. It's very difficult to get a good, sort of good, good audio tape, especially because I find, unlike TV, you're not necessarily fishing for that like one st strong bite. You're really asking someone to fully describe a moment. In audio, you get no visuals, right? So what what people were wearing, what they were smelling, what it sounded like, where they were, what they were feeling, they have to tell us all of that because we're not going to get we're not going to get any visual elements to show it. And so it takes a lot of care and it, it takes a lot of, you know, one of my old mentors used to tell me, like, sometimes you have to ask the same question three different ways. And then you, you're able to stitch together something that is like a really beautiful and rich answer. I think for me as a journalist, regardless of what medium you work in or work on, I think, you know, we all want to tell stories that have an impact. And I think that's always been a guiding light for us in this story is like, what is the impact of what we're telling? Um, and that was one of the most important, uh, important, I guess, like North Stars for me in this story was that we weren't shy about asking tough questions to the family. We're reporters and our job is to try to tell like the fairest, clearest picture of what happened here and to really tell the truth. And I, and to me, when people, you know, reach out to us respectively and say, this has made me think a little bit about my uncle or my sister or my friend, or has made me think a little bit about like the news sites I'm reading. I feel like, I, I feel proud of the work that we've done to me like that. That's a part of the goal in, in trying to have that impact. And it's, it's, it can be rare and hard as a journalist to do work that actually feels like it has an impact. So I think we both, you know, got tremendously lucky with the story.